Hi, it's Anne from the Useless Crafter. So I wanna show you how to build a um, cake topper slider and shaker. So this is sort of just like a quick overview so that you understand how to layer things and how to build it. So I have it piece by piece. Now you can see here, I have a lot of notes on here, okay? So from the back to the front, I wanna show you what that is. So you're gonna have your background, which in this case is this little doily shape, right? So it's the background, and then you have the back of the shaker, which in this case is this pink pink circle. And so you can see through the sequence, the background is the pink. Okay, then you have um, two foam layers, which would be this. So you can see that this cut on my rotary blade on the maker, you want to um, basically stack it on top because what will happen then is you will have this little wall that will hold your um, your sequins, right? So <clears throat> this is a different one. This is the back of the shaker, okay? You're gonna build your two layers of the foam. So it'll be a nice little wall. You're gonna throw in, um, I have a couple of things right here, sorry. These little hammers, but do you see how it sits in there? That, <laughs> That will have your sequins, whatever you want to put in here. I would also recommend as you're putting this together. So here's your circle, right? And it's going to be standing up like this. When it's in your cake and it's still, all your sequins will fall to the bottom. So I do recommend actually gluing a few pieces to stick up there so that it just doesn't look like all your sequins are stuck at the bottom. But okay, so you have your background. Oh, I'm sorry, you have the back of the shaker two foam layers, and then your sequins in the middle. Then you're gonna have your acetate paper on top. And then you're gonna have the back of the slider or the bottom of the slider, which are these two pieces, okay? So this one is completely um, filled, I guess. And then this one has a little slit so that it can move. So what you put in there, the way you build this is you're gonna have like a penny, okay? so. These two pieces will be uh, glued together, but before you glue it together, make sure you put your penny in there like that so that your penny will slide back and forth. It's a smooth piece. I've heard that card um, cardboard works as well. Um, if you use cardstock, you just wanna make sure that the cardstock is, um, I, I would use at least 110 pound, just because you wanna make sure it doesn't rip. It, it needs to be firm, right? So this penny goes in between and it's gonna slide like this. The way you build this penny is, I have these um, perler beads. They're perfect for this project because, um, let me see, where's my perler beads? Sorry, I'm coming back. <laughs> They're these little beads like this. So you're going to, and they have a little hole in the middle. So you're gonna put it down right in the middle. And my glue gun, Actually, the tip fits inside the hole, and I actually have one right now. So you can see, you, can, you wanna glue it down. I'm sorry, it's kinda of hard to do this right now. Um, so you wanna glue it down. It's coming apart. I wasn't expecting to really glue it, but my glue gun was sticky. Sorry about that. And I don't want to burn myself. <laughs> okay, so if you glue it down, you have your fuser. I didn't glue. Okay, you have your fuser bead or your perler bead on your penny. You slide. Now that you have these two pieces, you're gonna, you know, put it in here. Like, sorry, this is such a bad. It's so hard to see like that. Once it's put together, then you layer whatever piece on the moving piece. So in this case, it was this little, the little heart piece. So you can kind of see the, the little perler bead is going to be sticking up. So that way you have room to move it. And the penny glides really well. It doesn't, like I said, I like using the penny because it's a penny. So, um, and I feel like it's really stable. So that's how you build it, okay? So 
Now I'm going to make myself smaller so that we can talk through these pieces, okay? Um, all right. Your background piece, you need one, right? In this case, for the LOL doll, I did this cute little doily. So these are all numbers that you can search for within images um, with design space. So I used the doily. Then I created all these circles. Well, these circles, obviously, you just bring in, right? So you go to shapes, you bring in the circle. And it can be, I mean, you can do any shape. But for the sake of this tutorial, we're going to be using a circle. So you build your first circle. And this is the back of the shaker, right? Um, don't worry about how big it is or how small it is. You just want to make sure everything is um, proportionate to each other. So this circle is too big, right? And things are design space is slowing down because this project has so many words to it. Um, I'm wondering if I if this will help if I weld it. Give me a second. So then it's one image as opposed to 50 letters or however many letters that is. <laughs> okay, so let's see if that helps. Sorry, I'm gonna weld all these items. And that way we can move a little bit faster in design space because it's really slowing down. Sorry, we're almost there. I should have done this. I didn't realize it was slowing down so much. Okay, I'll leave these. So, build, um, you know, make your circle within this size. And let me make it a little bit bigger now that we don't need the words. Okay, so we have our back of the shaker. The way you make these foam things, just duplicate this. Make it smaller, right? Because you want it to sit inside this circle because that way you don't see the foam. So I bought the foam from Michaels and they had just funky colors. Um, and I looked on Amazon and it's always like a bunch of random colors. So you want to make sure that your foam sits inside and then everything covers it so that you can't see it. The other thing that I like about this is if you didn't do a good job in making sure your foam is completely glued and taped together, you can take your glue gun and put it in here and make sure that there's no leakage. Okay, so that's why I like making it that small. So all right, so we're building the foam right here. So if you like it right around there, let's say, let's duplicate it, because you need to make two circles. Okay, so these are our foam. Um, so you're going to grab that one and that one. And we're going to slice it because we need to make the edge, but not we, we need the inside out. Right. So let me show you what that looks like. So you see, you just slice the two out of there. Um, so let's make it a different color so you can see it better. So here's our foam. We're going to double up, right? Foam, foam. And then you have your acetate paper. Your acetate paper can fit this. So all you do is you duplicate it. But this one, we want it. Let's just click hide all because we need a full sheet of acetate paper, which in this case, where's my acetate paper? I wanted to show you. I ended up using um, the sheet protector, pocket protector from Avery. I will include it in this video. Um, it is super cheap or not super cheap, but cheaper than acetate paper. So I call it, call it acetate paper, but this is basically the clear sheet that goes that goes on top to hold the sequence together. So that's gonna be the same size as this, but without the hole, because this is clear, right? So now we're here at acetate paper, back of the slider. Okay, so now our slider is going to be bigger than this, but smaller than this piece. So let me change the color so that we have, it's easier to see. Okay, so. Because we wanna create that offset, but we also want the foam to be on the inside. So this is the back of my slider, okay? So I'm gonna duplicate it because the front of my slider is gonna go right on top. It's these two pieces right here. Now this little shape is this. 
it's the monkey. This is the image number to find it. So basically, depending on how you want to make your, um, your slider work, you can either use this, you can use this squiggly border. Um, so just ungroup it, it comes like that. So for instance, if you wanted to make it like this and you want it to zigzag, then just put it in here. And it needs to be smaller. We either need to make this much smaller. You can do something like this. Let's say you wanted to do that. Then you would just slice these two out, right? So you can have this shape. If you were doing water, you might want to do waves, right? This is the um, image number. Um, you can do this cute little swirly thing. So just imagine like it's just going round and round and round. This is the image number for that. This one I left in. You still need to work on this one though. This one I did it just because, um, you know, you can do this path right here. The way you would work this one is I would go to contour. And let's say we like this little path. So let's deselect this one. Mm, it's so hard to find the one. Deselect this. And how do I get this one over here? Is it this one? There. So that we're left with these two, right? But we need to close that hole. So you would bring in, let's bring in a square. Unlock the shape so that we can make it, you know, like that, for instance. Okay, let's duplicate that. And then grab this whole thing and we're gonna weld it. So now you have this, you know, cool little shape that you can make smaller, of course. But now it can go, it can do this little hump thing. So whatever shape that you want your slider to be, you're going to put it in here and slice it out. Now I'm going to slice out the way I had it. So I'm going to use my little monkey one. And you make it smaller. Go ahead and arrange, send to the front so that you can see it. And you can manipulate it here. You can make it thicker. So unlock it and make it, you know, thicker like that. Slice it if you only want a portion of this. But let's say this is, you like it the way it is. You're gonna grab the two items and slice. And now you have the top of your shaker. So do you see you created that? You want these two to be the same color because just think about, um, let's say I'm gonna do this butterfly in this little hole. Let me make my picture bigger again. <clears throat> so you want these two to be the same color because it's only gonna cover a little bit. The rest of the slider when it's not, you know, wherever it stands, you're gonna have a little bit of the slider. So you, I mean, you could want a different color. That would be kind of cool depending on what your theme is, but that's why I make it the same color is because that way you don't see in this hole, you can see just the white, okay? That's how you build it. So I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna zoom back out. We're gonna just gonna rebuild this now that you see what everything looks like, okay? So I'll make myself big again, right? So you have your background, which in this case, I'm doing a new cake topper. Okay, this is my background. This is the back of my shaker. Then I'm going to have my two foam layers that goes like this. And they're going to sit perfectly on top of each other. They don't right now. Pour in your sequins, whatever you want. Um,